Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a new modeling tutorial. We've just kicked off a new series where we explore how simple shapes can lead to powerful architectural designs. And there's no better tool for blending those forms than Rhino. In today's tutorial, we'll be using a few simple but essential commands to model this unique lookout structure, a design we created here in the studio. So let's jump into Rhino and get started. All right, guys, so the first thing that we have to do is to create a circle. So let's type in circle on the command bar. And one thing that you must make sure of is that you are going to be working with meters. So let's go into file, then new, and make sure that you are selecting large objects and meters because we are going to be working with architectural scale. So large objects, meters, and hit that OK button. Now let's jump into perspective. So double click on here. And again, let's type in circle. Also make sure that you have the grid snap turned on so that we can safely snap to these vertices that we have in here on our grid. And this circle is gonna have 10 meters in its radius. So type in 10 and then you can either hit the space bar or the enter key. So I'm just going to be hitting the space bar for now. The next step is going to be creating a rectangle. So type in rectangle now. And if you look closely on the command bar, we have these options of where this square is going to be starting off from. So in this case, it's going to be from its center. So click on center. And in order to have a proportional square, I'm going to be holding and pressing the shift key like so. Okay, now that we have these two base shapes, and as you can see, they are very primitive objects, but we can create something very interesting from these two. So once you have these two, I'm going to be selecting all of them like so with my mouse, or you can go ahead and type in cell all on the command bar. Now I'm going to be typing in trim because we no longer need these intersections. So we end up with something like this. For our next step, I'm going to be typing in a circle now. Again, I'll be using this intersection that we have up here. And this circle is gonna have five meters on its radius. Now, to copy the same command that we just did, so basically a circle, I'm going to be hitting the spacebar again, so that's going to automatically repeat the last command, which was circle. Now, I'm also going to be creating it from this other intersection, and in this time, again, I'll be using 5 meters on its radius. Again, let's type in cell all to select all of the objects on our canvas, and again, let's type in trim, because I'm going to be deleting all of these now. Okay, now I'll be selecting this left object. In order to be more precise about this, let's turn off the grid snap and instead of just dragging it upwards, I'm going to click once on the Z axis of our gumball, like so, and I'll take it up by four meters. Now, if you're working with meters, don't worry, you'll just have to type in four. But for example, if you're working with centimeters, you'll have to type in 4M which is four meters, right? All right, and now for our next step, I'm going to be wanting to blend these two shapes together. And the way to do that is just by typing in blend CRV. Now CRV is curve here in Rhino, so just type in blend CRV. If we wanted to blend a surface, we would need to just type in blend SRF, but in this case, it's going to be CRV. And we just need to follow whatever the command bar is telling us to do next. So in this case, it's telling us to select the curve to blend, which is going to be this one and then this other one over here. Now make sure that on this window that pops up, we have the curvature as a continuity because sometimes it's going to be by default. Sometimes we will have position, for example, and this is not something that we want because we're looking for a very smooth transition in between these two objects. So let's just go ahead and select these two. So point one is this one, point two is this one over here, and both are set as curvature. So select those and click on OK. Now again, I'm just going to be hitting the space bar on the command bar, and I'm going to be selecting this guy and this guy over here. So both of these curves again, and now we just click on OK. All right, so for the next part, what we need to do is to create a surface out of this very curved design but it's gonna be a little bit difficult for us to create a surface because it's gonna look a little bit weird if we just go ahead and select everything, type in join, and then type in patch, for example. I'm gonna click on okay. As you can see, this will not be accurate. As you're gonna find out that we have this effect going on, so that's not good. Therefore, we need to create these surfaces from scratch and separately. So select everything, 
and just type in explode. So we end up with the first initial curves. Let's go ahead and select in these like so and join them together. So join. Now, how are we going to make a surface out of these two curves? We're going to be needing to add a polyline. So type in polyline on the command bar and we need to create this polyline from these intersections. So I'll be selecting this one first and then head out over here to the right side. And as you can see, Rhino is smart enough to just calculate the intersection. Now, one thing to always keep in mind is that you need to have the O snap turned on. And in this case, I have the intersection option also checked. So make sure that you have those two options ready. And the same thing at the bottom. Now, because this surface has a little bit of a curvature, what I'm going to do is to select these four curves. And instead of using commands such as planar SRF or patch, I'm going to go up here into surface and I'm going to be using curve network. We're not going to be going through these settings. So just click on OK and we end up with this very precise surface. Now, what we need to do is to select both of these curves down here and join them together. And because these curves are on the same construction plane, we can use the planar SRF command. And there we go. And the same thing with this one over here at the top, join and then planar SRF. And we have all of these shapes now. Now select all of them with shift and then type in join. For the next part of this tutorial, we're going to be creating the void. So for this, I'm going to select the whole shape and type in dope border, which is going to duplicate the border. Now type in offset to offset this curve and make sure that the distance is set as three. So that's enough space for the pedestrians to walk around. Select the newly created curve drag it up a little bit and I'll be typing in project. By default, project will have the direction set as Z. So you don't have to do anything at this point, just leave it as is. And now select the surfaces where we want this curve to be projected, which is going to be this one over here. And there we go. Now let's type in split while selecting the surface. And if we look at the command bar, it's telling us to select the cutting objects, which is going to be this guy over here. Now we just need to delete the inner surface like so and we have this very interesting void by the way if you want to learn how to create clean visuals and animations using enscape ai and model efficiently in rhino i've put together a full workshop that walks through the whole process you can find the link in the description if you're curious to check it out but now we need some handrails because if we don't place them then the people are going to fall down we don't want that and we still should have the line that we got from the dot border command. However, the handrails will start from this point. So what we need to do is just to split this curve with this edge over here. So go ahead and type in split. And now it's telling us to select the cutting objects. And I'm going to be pressing control plus shift to select only these edges at the bottom and just hit the enter key. And as you can see, now we have only this part of our curve, which we can extrude up using the gumball. So select the curve, click on the gumball, and the height of these handrails, it's gonna be 0.9. And to add a bit more of design to our handrails, what I wanna do is just to pick this vertex on both sides and drag it down. And the easiest way to do that is just to type in solid point on. So I'm going to select both of these points and drag them down with the gumball. Now, if you cannot see the gumball, make sure that it's actually activated down here. So it's a good idea to always have it turned on. Okay, this looks a bit more interesting. Now, obviously we need the internal handrails. So pick the curve and repeat the process. So just extrude it with the gumball and there we go. To add further detail, we can give some thickness to these surfaces. So select this one. And to give thickness to this, we are going to be typing in offset SRF, which is offset the surface and make sure that these arrows are actually pointing inwards and not outwards. And you can do this by just going up here and clicking on flip all. And the distance of this thickness is only going to be 20 centimeters. So we can type in 0.2 and apply the same workflow for the interior handrails. Type in offset surface, or you can just use the space bar key. We're going to be leaving the distance at 0.2. So that's fine. We can also check it out on an Arctic mode instead of shade it to see if our surface has any errors on it. And it definitely does not. It looks very, very clean and smooth. 
let's go back to shade it because now we are going to work on the steps. So select both of these surfaces with Ctrl plus shift and use the extract surface command so that these two surfaces are not going to be part of our whole object anymore. And that's exactly what we want. And in order to be more efficient, I'm only going to be working on one of these. So type in isolate so that we only focus on this surface. And in order to create those steps, we'll be using the contour command. Now you can either go to a lateral view for this to be a bit more precise. So our contour lines will start from this point and we want this to happen on the Z axis. Just press the shift key. It's going and to be 0 0.2 upwards, meters. So like type so, in 0 0.2. And the distance between each contour and enter. Now we can hide the main surface, so just hide it like this. And to keep it more realistic and clean, let's just delete these two curves. Now select all of the curves, you can either select them like this, or if you have a bunch of curves on your project and you want to select all of them real quick, you can go ahead and type in cell CRV, which is select curves. And again, extrude them either with a gumball or just type in extrude CRV on the command bar and the height of these steps is going to be 0.2. Okay, now let's select all of them again. And just a quick tip, instead of selecting them like that, you can again type in cell SRF, which will only select surfaces. Now give them thickness with offset surface, flip them all. And to keep it again realistic, the width of each step is going to be 0.3, so 30 centimeters. And there we go. Now this step is a bit too far from all of them. So what I'm going to do is just to press Ctrl plus Shift to select this individual surface and to change the direction of this gumball so that we have it facing on the normal direction. I can go ahead and right click on the gumball and instead of having a line to C plane, I'll have it aligned to object like this and I'm just going to be dragging it all the way over here. The same thing with this step over here, so Ctrl plus Shift. Now let's purge all of the curves that we don't need. Therefore, type in cells here V, delete them, grab all of your steps and group them together with a command group. Let's show everything and we can see that the steps are actually overlapping with our handrails. We don't want that, so select all of them and we're going to be scaling them in one direction. And you guessed it, the command is going to be scale 1D. Make sure that on the O-Snap options, you have the mid option turned on so that you can grab it right here. Now grab this intersection from the steps and lower it down. And it would be better for us to just turn the O-Snapping off so we have a little bit more of freedom when we scale these steps like this. And for this other side, I'll just type in mirror, activate the grid snap, and I'll mirror it diagonally from this point to this other side like this. Now for the final part of this tutorial, what I'm going to do is to create a structure for my lookout. And for this, let's go to a lateral view. And let's turn this viewport from wireframe to shade it. I'm going to go for an interpolate curve. And to have a little bit more freedom, I'm going to unable grid snap and start off from this point so that we maintain a fluid design like so, and drag it all the way down here, and there we go. Now let's move on to the perspective mode, and notice how the gumball looks funny, that's because we have it as aligned to object, so let's go ahead and select the align to construction plane. Now we need to copy this line to this other side so that we complete our structure, and the command that I'll be using for that is gonna be called rotate 3D. Now rotate 3D is asking me for the rotation axis for which I'll be selecting the O snap option, then clicking on this intersection and with the shift key, I'll be aligning this on the Z axis. Now it's asking me for the angle of rotation, which is gonna be from this point all the way over here to this other point. And then just hit the space bar once you are done. In order to create a surface, we're going to be needing to close this shape. So type in polyline, select this intersection and make sure that you are using the shift key again to align it to the Z axis. Press the space bar. Now again, type in polyline, make sure that you have the perpendicular option on the O snap so that we can snap it perpendicular to this other line and another one for this line over here. Now select them all and type in trim. Now because I need to create a surface on this side and this other side too, 
I'm going to be copying this center line and we can just use control C and then control V. If I click once in here, you'll see that I have two curves now. I also need the top curve. So let's type in polyline again, grab this intersection and drag it all the way over here. And the same thing goes for this side. Now let's select the curves on this side, join them together and the same thing with this other side too. So select all of the curves and type in join. And if I look closely, these curves are not actually aligned properly. So they're not touching my surface. So what we need to do is to align them properly. And we can do that using the set points command. And that's set PT. In this case, I need to align them on the Y axis. So I'm going to uncheck X and Z. Click on OK and snap it to this intersection. We can also use the command move. So I can just select this point and snap it to this intersection. We no longer need this other curve over here because we can just copy it. Now that all of the points are aligned to the construction plane, we can type in planar SRF and we'll get this surface. Now again, let's use the rotate 3D command, select the rotation axis, which is gonna be this one, and then the angle, which is gonna be this one over here, which you can just snap to this edge at the top, hit the spacebar again. Now select both surfaces, type in join, and then let's give it some thickness with offset surface. Make sure that these are going to be pointing inwards. And if we just take another look at this, you'll see that we're still not aligned to our overall design. So we can type in move and then move it over here. And by using the solid point on command, we can grab the control points from the surface and align them like so. Now let's go all the way over here and do the same thing. Make sure that you have the perpendicular option turned on on the O snapping tool and we're good to go. Now let's purge the curves because we no longer need them. Therefore type in cells here V and delete all of them. Now we can give them a thickness by typing in offset surface and let's use a thickness of 0.3 so that's 30 centimeters, enter and enter. And in order for us to have a longer column, we can just select with control plus shift the surfaces at the bottom and extrude them with the gumball downwards. Obviously we need the structure on this side too. So let's grab our whole geometry, type in mirror, and we're going to be repeating the same process as we did for the stairs. We're going to be applying this mirror diagonally for the final step. We can just select all of these surfaces join them together and give them some thickness either with the gumball or again with the offset surface command. And now let's check out our design on an Arctic mode. And we can see that we ended up with a very smooth and nice looking design. And that wraps up today's tutorial. I hope you enjoyed exploring how simple shapes can turn into powerful architectural forms with Rhino. If you found this helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss the next one in the series. And if you want to go deeper and learn how to create high quality visuals and animations using Rhino, Enscape and AI, check out the full workshop. The link is down in the description. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.